ignorance in certain procedures of the research may lead to a lot of issues if you are a beginner in the research. Today's video, I am going to uh, tell you about very important thing, how to choose, apply a theory to a research. Let me repeat, theory is a uh, heart of a research, but I found many researchers have not applied theories in their research. When I read papers, when I read certain theses also, they directly take the problem and they go ahead with their original idea, just they, they just they proceed with the research. But there is no proper theoretical framework. So this is a very essential part. So in this video, I am going to give five tips how to choose, how to choose or find and choose the proper theory and how to apply to a research and uh, how to select the theory also. Got it? First of all, what is a theory? What is the necessity of a theory? See, th theories help you to justify your findings. Otherwise, it, it may not be a really uh, accepted one. Theories are established beliefs or a kind of procedure already which is tested by so many people already, then when it becomes a theory. So, it is not a kind of a just strike an idea, it is a established through so many testing. So, when, when your findings align, uh, findings align with the theory, your research becomes so valid. That is point number one. Point number two. And what if, if I do not apply a theory? Very simple, you can do uh, research without applying theories also. But that may not be valid, it is kind of writing and a simple essay. No, you, you can write that, it is not a research one. When, when you ask somebody to write, a, uh, no, probably what is your opinion about climatic change or climatic problem, environmental issues, you write something on your own. It becomes that way. But research paper or thesis, it is not simply doing something, it is a systematic way of approaching anything. So, when you go with the theory only, it becomes systematic scientific approach or else it becomes a very normal, usual approach that may not be really useful to you. Useful, not only useful to you, to the entire researchers. Got it? Now, let us see how to select a theory with set an example. I will show you the demonstration of how to, I uh, will take a one sample topic. I will analyze, you know, I will help you to select the theory. Then I will help you to how to apply into your research. All those things we will see come, let us say. See, for that what you need to do is, once uh, you, know, you, you decide the topic, you come to the Google Scholar, you know that uh, scholar.google.com. Here you can type the uh, whatever the research, research you want to do, you can type it here and check. Here I have taken the impact of students' poor attention on theory. See, I, I, I am intended to do a research on students' attention, but I don't know which theory I need to apply. But I, I, I'm, I'm very sure that poor attention is creating a lot of issues in the class. It's a universal fact. But still, I cannot generally say that poor attention is uh, really creating a problem that everybody says. But uh, scientifically, how can I prove this? Father, you need a theory. So, Father, what you need to do is just you type whatever the topic you wanted to do a research, then give and, it is called Boolean operator. Just give and, and uh, give theory, then it will give you a lot of results. So, I have selected already to, to save the time uh, two papers here. One is where to take a study break on the college campus and attention restoration theory perspective. Look at there, here this one I have already selected where to take study break on the college campus on attention restoration theory perspective. So, this Google Scholar search will help us. How the previous researcher has taken the similar topic, what kind of theories they have applied. So, from that paper, you can understand the theory. See, normally you do a literature review and this one is only for a theoretical review. So, you can understand what kind of theory they have used. For that, simply you, you come, come down and read their uh, abstract, you will understand. In this particular paper, you can see that here, uh, let me tell you. So, here look at there, uh, college students spend much of their time on campus engaged in activities that require and sustained direction attention which may lead to attention fatigue. They would benefit from campus setting that provide effective restoration break. 
allow uh, and allow them to return their work cognitively refreshed uh, this is very important studies have found direct exposure to nature viewing through uh, uh, viewing through windows and viewing images of nature are restorative this is one already established uh, uh, kind of fact but in the present study in the present study college students instructed to imagine themselves cognitively fatigued related perceived re restorativeness of indoor campus setting that varied by view of nature some had no views of nature and some had windows views of nature with the built structures present and so and so all those things are there so here what you can the restorative attention restorativeness is the main theoretical uh, frame so how yeah, attention is restored here they are saying that when student uh, view the nature their attention restoration is high so here if you read the entire paper you can understand how attention restorativeness has been built using the theory and how because generally the uh, no it may go like that in generally if you look at the plain wall you feel really petty nothing but in the same plain wall if you have uh, imaginary pictures i'll show you the original paper also i have uh, got it here and uh, just a minute i have already download i have already downloaded look at there if you look at their the pictures they have used this one is a normal plane this is the this is how they they sit look at there and here you have some na natural uh, opening and if you come down you can see the some other pictures with you uh, know uh, trees where here some pictures with water here which is waterfalls in the normal thing so what they have analyzed what way these pictures create an impact you know restorativeness in their attention span so it is a study theoretically try to prove that the nature settings will will there any impact in the nature settings in the student restorativeness so here they are using their attention restorativeness as a one theoretical stand that number one let me go to the another one article where i have taken uh, look at there this one yeah it's a very big paper and uh, I'll, I'll i'll tell you here this paper talks about optimizing performance through intrinsic motivation and attention for learning how students learn through intrinsic motivation and attention here they have used the optimal theory of motor learning so they have used the theory the optimal theory of motor learning this optimal theory look at that here they propose this researcher propose we propose optimal that is optimizing perform, performance through intrinsic motivation and attention for learning theory of motor learning so this particular theory they are proposing to propose this theory already they have done a, a very detailed reviews and finally look at that I'll, I'll show you the research gap they have found and what theory they have used Uh, also you can uh, check let me take you to that particular page just a minute okay it's a very big paper actually it's a 32 page paper and they have done a lot lots and lots of uh, uh, paper uh, lots of review they have done and finally they have given okay so just a minute i'll, I'll need to is it exactly we have already selected but uh, just a minute yeah okay you do one thing probably uh, I, i couldn't find out quickly and you can um, mail me uh, if you are watching this video just to type in the comment box and uh, uh, leave your uh, email id i'll send this paper to you you can uh, now in there I'll, i'll exactly i'll mention the theoretical gap no exactly how they have designed their theory also i'll tell you so this is the how 
you may identify a, a new, new theory and you can go ahead with that thing. For that, what you need to do is, first thing you have to read, uh, decide the paper, then go to the Google Scholar and search with Boolean operators, then go to the respective paper, read the abstract and understand the theory, then go to the exact respective theoretical area and understand the theoretical uh, component of that particular uh, research, then you can apply in your own theory. Got it? And one more important thing, and I have to, uh, uh, just a minute, have to do those things and I will tell you some other example also. See, after doing that particular analysis as I have shown you in the, uh, what you call demonstration, next one you can go ahead with the uh, identifying the parameters of uh, uh, what you call theory. I have shown you the example. So, once you understand, try to identify the various parameters of theoretical stand, then take those parameters, try to apply it. And if you do not uh, identify the parameters of theory, then you do not understand. For example, in, in the paper I have shown, it uh, talks about intrinsic motivation. In the theory of motivation, there are two stand, one is called intrinsic motivation, another one is called extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation happens automatically, you know, through, uh, through autonomy, you, you get motivated yourself. Uh, extrinsic motivation through certain, you no, know, in the class, for instance, you give a prize, you appreciate, you say that he is the winner. That way you, you motivate them, you give some pen as a prize or something else. But intrinsic motivation, obviously, they get motivated by, you know, learning the subject and getting their own interest. So, here, which theory will apply to check whether students are really good or bad, intrinsic motivation or extrinsic motivation. So, this is how you may apply. So, there are many theories, many, many theories are there. I have taken only one example I have shown you and rest of the thing, in case you want me to talk about particular theory and how to apply in our research, kindly comment in the comment box. I will do a next video, I will catch you there. Okay. Now, I think you hope understood how to uh, read the importance of what is theory, importance of theory, then how to sell a search for a theory, how to select the theory, how to apply in our research. And finally, you have to identify, no, even before you apply, you need to identify the parameters of theory, then have to apply. And in case you want me to do some specific video on a particular theoretical stand, kindly comment in the comment box. I will do in the next video. Till then, bye. Have a good day.